everybody. Have you ever wished that you could draw a simulation of a noise map for a particular project to just see what the decibel levels would be like in a particular outdoor environment? If you've ever wondered about this or you want to play around with a free tool that lets you do this, I'm going to show you a few basics today on a website that's called Noise Tools. It was created by an engineering company and it's free for you to use or you can subscribe to it and pay to use it. And so I'm gonna show you a few basics on how you can simulate drawings of buildings and barriers such as a fence and try it out for yourself and see how the decibel noise levels, how the decibels are affected when you have different heights and different distances. So let's take a look. So let's start with a decibel map or DB map. To open it, just scroll down to this button that says Start Noise Mapping. And you'll see a place where you can log in if you have a paid account. But you don't have to create an account to use a few of the tools here. Keep scrolling down and you'll see the user guide. There's a lot to read through, but you'll see that it covers some of the basic tools that you can use right away. And some tools and features that are only available to paid subscribers like 3D and terrain mapping. But you can get started with basic shapes for buildings, barriers, and noise paths. And, as they explain in this guide, you can save your work as a bookmark in your browser, and you can save different versions of your work incrementally and return back to them again. When you click the instructions away, you'll get a blank canvas. And here's the toolbar. The Select tool is the arrow icon. You can select objects with the arrow and you can manipulate them, like lengthen them or shorten them. But you can't move them around on the canvas. For that, you need to use this hand icon. And over here on the left, you have this legend that shows the different color schemes for the decibel levels that you'll see on the map later. Back in the toolbar, the pencil tool is for editing your objects after you create them. This tool at the bottom, Add Objects, brings up a selection of objects that you can create. For my purposes, I'm mainly concerned with drawing a couple of buildings and a noise source. So I'll choose Building and start drawing a shape. And I see some different roof styles, so I chose a sloped roof. So right now, the building is only 2 meters high. That's only 6.5 feet. But I can adjust the height in this pop-up box. So now I have a 7 meter high building, which is almost 23 feet high. And it has a range. I'm not sure why maybe because of the sloped roof. So I set the range from 7 meters to 8.1 meters high, and I'm going with the default setting of flat hard walls. And now I'm adding a second building, so the two buildings are basically the same size, and I'm going to set a point. I think this is the point where the noise is coming from. As you can see, the tool doesn't like this. Apparently, I've put the point inside the building, so maybe it needs to be on the outside of the building. And you can see that it has some default settings with a frequency of 500 Hz and the A-weighted decibels are 96.8 decibels, which is going to be pretty loud. You can change these settings. Let's take a look at the power level setting. Aha! I see a menu here with different noises and there's a backhoe, so I'm going to choose that. And I want to move that point outside of the building. I haven't even done anything else yet, but you can see that it's already drawn all the zones with decibel levels in them. So a large area around these points is dark blue, and that's 80 plus decibels. And behind the buildings, it's bright red, which is about 60 decibels. So now I'm going to go back to the shapes and get a barrier. I'm going to insert a barrier between the two buildings to try and block some of that backhoe noise. Hmm. It looks like the barrier is about the same height as the buildings. I don't think that's very realistic, but for the moment, let's go with it. And I can move it around and position it, angle it, move it closer to the backhoe, and watch to see if it changes the noise pattern at all. I can also edit the barrier and change the height. So now I've changed the height to 9 meters. This is also not realistic because now the barrier is taller than the buildings, but watch how it changes the decibel levels. If you want to delete an object, you have to backspace your browser to the moment where you added that object. If you do that, I recommend that you create bookmarks for your work incrementally. I'm not going to get into all the things you can do here, like setting paths and receivers. This is just a short introduction, and I encourage you to try this tool out for yourself. 
Now let's go back and look at the second tool, the sound propagation tool. When you go into this tool, it already has a source and a receiver set up with a barrier in the middle. And notice how the heights of the objects are already set, and also the frequency, the sound power level, and the distance from the noise source. You can change all these settings, and you can even remove the barrier or add a double barrier. The resulting decibel level is going to change based on how you change all these parameters. So I've added some walls behind the source and the receiver. These walls face each other, and I assume they're going to create some reverb with the noise. And sure enough, you can see that the decibel level went up after I added the walls. If I lower the height of the barrier, the decibel level also goes up. If I raise the barrier, the decibel level goes down. If I raise the height of the source and the receiver and then lower the barrier, the decibel level goes even higher. So these tools are a good way to simulate how acoustics get affected by different objects, by different heights, angles, distances, and materials. So again, the URL for this tool is noisetools.net, and it's created by a UK engineering company called MAS Environmental. Their website is at masenv.co.uk. And we thank them for making these tools available online. It's a good way to experiment and learn. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and that you try these tools out. And for more information about noise and acoustics, visit soundproofist.com. Soundproofist.